Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Revelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 2nd of March, 2015, and this is episode 118, Mend It March, Part 1. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. So yeah, Mend It March, uh, I don't know that it's happening this month, because last week I told you I was considering mending things, and I did, and um, I realized I have kind of a stash of knitting that just isn't quite right. So I'm going to try to tackle that this month. But I'll talk more about that at the end. This week, we um, Gabriel had a book fair at school, and that was really, really exciting. Did you, do you guys like book fairs? I love book fairs. I love them so much. And I kind of can't wait until the kids um, are in middle school so that they have books there that I actually want to buy for myself. Because I will. Um, but it was really cool. We got two books for Gabriel's classroom because they have a wish list thing. I don't remember my classrooms having wish lists when I was in school. Is this a new thing or were they always there and I just didn't notice because I was too excited trying to figure out how to spend my personal budget? Do you... Do you guys remember that from when you were little? I don't know. We bought two books for his classroom and we got the kids each a couple books. And um, Mara got, the one that she's really excited about is actually a pack of books. It's easy reader books and is based on Disney princesses. And one of the books is called Rapunzel Can. And Rapunzel can knit. Disney wants there to be more knitters. I I opened the book and I was just like, I can't believe this page is in here. That's awesome. Um, and Gabriel got a really cool book. It is a Lego book. And it's kind of like a physics book for kids using Legos. So you have to have Legos. I guess you don't yeah, you kind of have to have Legos already, and it just gives you additional pieces, and there are paper cutouts and things. It's very, very cool. Uh, I actually actually have, hold on, Gabriel left this on my floor. Turn the wheel, and it pulls up the, uh, the lever to pull up the bucket. And, um... And then it's got these pivot joints on here and more pivot joints. It's all very, very, he's very, very into the book and reading about how things make things work. It's very cool. He explains it way better than I do, but he's at school right now, so he can't explain it to you. The steampunk knit along is going on. We are entering the final month right now. So you have 29 days from when I'm recording, so probably 28 days by the time this gets posted in which to finish and post an object in the thread and um, the rules are all in the thread. I have been very, very fail at being on Ravelry. I know. I know you guys have been talking, which is great. I see that there are new posts in the chatter thread. I see that there are new posts in the um, episode threads been very very behind on Ravelry but I'm getting back to like being able to do all of that. I'll talk about that in a little while too. So what I'm working on is a cog in the machine which is a design by me and the yarn that I'm using is Marigold Gen Copper Patina. I'm using US size 4 3.5 millimeter needles and I have sections 1, 2, and 3 finished. So I knit, um, I knit most of section three in a day because I just love the section so much. So there's texture. Can you guys hear the birds? Do you hear the, the birds? They're coming back. They're like, oh, it's March, springtime, even though there's snow on the ground. I don't know if you can hear the birds in the background, but they're there. So this is what I knit up from. And... I have started section four, which is the applied edging. And I am about halfway through. 
the edging. Let's see, this is this is the halfway point, so I have this many stitches to apply edging to, and then I'll be halfway approximately. This is what the edging looks like. Ooh, sorry about that. So when it's blocked, it'll be stretched out, and this looks really, really shallow. And you could leave it shallow if you didn't block it, but this whole thing, because there's garter and the texture is garter, stretches out pretty deep. So next week this should be done because I I really like the applied edging. It's uh, pretty easy to memorize, it goes quickly, and it's a good it's a good mindless but not mindless thing. Like you have to think about it a little bit, but I could do it while um, I couldn't do every row of it. The first row of it I couldn't do while reading, but all the other rows I could do while reading. So, yay that I, so is this silly? I got to, um, I got to section three and, and I was working on it this week and I was like, wow, I really, really love the section. And then I got to the edging and I was like, I designed pretty things. I'm proud of myself. That's silly, right? But I forgot how much I liked this edging because it's been a while since I knit it. Anyway, I hope your um, steampunk things are coming along. And yeah, that ends at the end of the month. I don't have any finished objects, but I do have works in progress with pretty decent progress. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the least impressive work in progress first. <laughs> And they are the Suggestive Message Socks by Mara Marzaki. I'm using Knit Picks Stroll in the um, hand painted in the make believe colorway. That's the toes and heels. And I just dropped my stitch marker. Um, the green stripe is canopy, Knit Picks tonal canopy. And the purple stripe is Fleece Artist BFL. And there's no colorway name on that. And mostly it got set aside because I really got into the shawl. But also it got set aside because I can't, it's illusion knitting and there's supposed to be a message there and I, there, 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 where, here. And um, I can't see a message. So they're probably going to end up just being stripy socks for my sister with weird texture, but whatever. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not ripping it out and retrying because it's not that much work, but I'm just not going to. So yeah, I'm going to try it and maybe it will turn out and it'll be fine. I don't know. I don't know. I, it's not getting a lot of work because it's not turning out as cool as my brain wants it to. And I don't know if that's a knitter problem or a pattern problem because there are only two projects on Ravelry and for this pattern and one of them says that they liked the colors in the pattern but not the message so they didn't do the illusion knitting part. It's not helpful. And the one that has, and the other one is not to the illusion knitting part yet, I think. So that's kind of frustrating. So we'll see how that goes, if you can read the message or not. If you can, cool, and if not, stripey socks. The other works in progress are exciting, though. This is the Sarah by Laura Ayler. And did I not put a mark? I did. Okay. So here is how much work I did from there down. This much. And I have, you can see the arm. That's the um, That's the arm going in. Um, the last section had a lot going on all at once. Well, and this section will also have a lot going on at once. You're making increases in several different places and on specific rows at different rates. That's, it's kind of crazy, but not bad crazy, just... I don't know, a lot to pay attention to, which, um, which I read people had 
a difficult time doing, so I'm trying to be really mindful and pay a lot of attention as I'm making it. Which is why it doesn't have quite as much um, progress as if it were a less complicated? It's not really a complicated pattern. I mean, it's stockinette. It's just, I have to pay attention to the increases a lot more than past sweaters. So that's why it's not as far as, um, as it might be, but it will get there. And the yarn that I'm using is so pretty. It's 716 knit Kona worsted in a modified hamster's colorway. And I just love it so much. This is this is going to be such a great sweater. I'm so excited for this sweater. I'm so, so excited for this sweater. I can't. I cannot express how excited I am, but I am super, super, super excited. Um, and you can see that I am alternating skeins. So I have two strands coming off, and I am alternating every other row. Um... I am thinking for the sleeves, I don't know if this will work out, but my thought is to, um, when I get to the sleeves, is to knit a few rows below the sleeve with the, um, with both of these yarns and then break the yarn and put in, swap out one of the yarns for the third skein of yarn and then do the sleeves in, um, in the yarn that I broke off, or maybe I'll just work from the outside of that ball. I don't know. That way the sleeves aren't jarringly different from this. I don't even know if you make sleeves after. I don't know how that works. I didn't read ahead in the pattern, but that's kind of where I'm thinking with it. I'll let you know maybe next week if I get that far with it. So that's my sweater. The other work in progress I have is super exciting. Um, it's not going as fast as I originally thought it was going to, but I'm okay with that. This is the spindle project that I'm working on, and it is, I have the tag today, Gourmet Stash Halloween Unclub, the Hollows and Horcruxes. I have the Horcruxes, and they are tribbles. She calls them tribbles, so it's two ounces. I am on the third set of tribbles, and they are Huffle. Puffs Cup, Super Fine Merino, Yak Silk, and Angelina. And look at how pretty this is. It's got a gold fiber, white, and black with sparkle. I've just barely started spinning that. But I wound off, um, because my spindle is getting full, I wound off the first three tribbles into a center pull ball. I'm pulling from the outside though. And I have started plying. This is my um, chain ply. And it is looking doo -doo -doo, like that. That's my plied yarn. So again, I just barely started that, but it's officially started plying and I really, really like the way that this little bit has plied up. I'm super excited for the finished yarn and um, I really like plying while I'm still spinning singles when that's possible because it gives me a little more drive to continue spinning the singles. It's just like a, it's just a reminder that it will someday be an actual something and I'm not just doing the same thing over and over again forever. Is Mara bothering you in the background? Because she's kind of bothering me. Sorry. I worked on some barn raising squares. So this is the one I was working on last week. This is Cloud Lover. And this was the one I was working on last week, wasn't it? I don't know. I think this was it. Um, Cloud Lover Poison Apple Colorway. The, the, one that, the other one that I may have been working on last week, I can't remember, is this one, which is... Um, this is the one I was working on. I remember talking about it now. So this was new. Um, this is Peyton's Croy FX in the Calla Lilies colorway. And it is so pretty. I am super excited about that. And I am almost finished with 
square number 12. So I'm not going to show it to you next week because I'm binding off right now. If one side bound off and then started on the second side. This is um, Premier Yarn Serenity Sock in a sage green colorway, maybe? Don't remember. And also something weird happened right here. I don't know what why that happened, what that is. Do you see how those yarn overs are strange? I don't know, but I'm, I don't mind it. So it's going to stay because I'm not ripping back all of that when I'm binding off. That would be silly. And it's just a blanket square. Whatever. So yeah, that's a square number 12. Square number 12. Yes. I am all caught up on how many squares I wanted, I think. I've, yeah, I'm caught up to where I wanted to be with my squares at this point in time. So that means if I keep going at the rate of one square a week, I will be on track not to finish on any particular deadline, just I want to do a square a week. So I'm caught up. What I am reading. Gone with the wind. I am now this far. Making progress. Slow and steady. Perks of being a wallflower. I started it. I did not finish it. I did not even get very far. I am in part one, or I just finished part one, and there are five, four parts and an epilogue. So I finished part one. I'm not very far. I'm on page 40, I think, out of 212 or something, or 192. I don't know. Very short. I just I didn't get into it right away. So I'm sure once I get into it, It'll be finished that day. I'm just not there yet. And I found Reached by Ali Condi. I told you that I had misplaced it. I misplaced it under my dresser. Most likely I set it down on the floor next to my bedside table because my bedside table is very small. And um, sometimes the book that I'm reading can fit on there, but that depends on if I have knitting and water and... Um, anything else on there because I have a, a lamp that takes up probably half of the space on my bedside table. It's a very small bedside table. It it worked really well when I got it, but um, I think I need a different style of bedside table now. I've outgrown mine. Anyway, reached. I am close to finishing. I have 60 pages to go. This will be finished this week, mostly because I need to return it to the library. So I will let you know how it goes. I. I started reading it again and I found like a, a, a not so interesting spot. So it took me a really long time to get through, I don't know, 40 or 50 pages, the last 40 or 50 pages that I read. But then action picked up again and it was much more interesting. So I am looking forward to, to finding out how the story resolves itself because this is the last book of the trilogy. Um, oh, this week also, so you can see right here and here, um, my Ravelry stash is updated, I think completely. I have to double check my fiber stash and actually that's incorrect. I found in a box, um, from a swap partner, I have a whole bunch of mini skeins waiting to go in my blanket sitting in a box next to me, and I found a skein, an actual skein of yarn that was from a swap partner that I did not upload into Ravelry, so I have one skein to go. But um, all of my other yarn is in Ravelry now. <laughs> I did that Saturday. It was an all-day project, but it's there. I can now search my stash on Ravelry and no yardage and stuff and not have to actually physically pull things out, which is nice. It's nice to be able to physically pull things out of the shelf but um, as you can see, they're pretty tightly packed, so it's kind of a mess sometimes to do that. But anyway, my Revelry stash is updated except for that one skein, and I need to go through my fiber stash on Revelry really quick and check and make sure that it's all in there because there might be one or two braids that didn't make it in. Not positive. Um, but I'm actually really, really happy that it's all in there instead of sitting right here on my floor next to me, next to my desk, because this is where Mara likes to stand. And I kept getting angry at her for stepping on my yarn, but I know she likes to stand there because she likes to see everything. 
and she also likes to be really close to me. I don't know why she chooses this side instead of this side, but she does. So it was time. So I put it all away. And that's really good. And um, I also started updating my Ravelry projects. Not with a ton of information, mostly just hooker needle size, what yarn I use, and um, a project picture. Start and finish dates that are approximate. Um, I don't think I've added any notes to anything. But I am now current through uh, the beginning of November last year. I know I got really, really bad at it. I, I got a job and I just stopped like everything else. So I'm trying to get back into the swing of things and um, I think a lot of the reason why I haven't been on Ravelry a lot chatting is because I felt guilt about not having all of that stuff in. So now my stash is in and my projects are almost updated and then I should feel no guilt about stuff on Ravelry, right? So I will hopefully, hopefully this leads into me being on the board more frequently like I should be. I shouldn't be slacking and not chatting with you guys because you take the time to post in um, the Ravelry group and I really want to be a part of that. I mean, it's, I make the podcast, right? I should be a part of the conversation, not just this part, but also when you say something, I should respond back. And um, I hope to be, I hope to get back to that. I used to be pretty good about it and I don't know, the past several months I've been horrible. I really apologize for that. But I hope to get back to that and better with that. So, mending. It happened this month. This month. This week. It happened this week. And um, I found a lot of other things that need to be mended. So, I will show you what I did first. And then I will talk about some plans. I... Woven the ends. I've woven some ends. Are you proud? I'm proud. I woven the ends on the hat, the uh, rainbow hat, the melusine. I woven the ends and I tried it on and um, I said that I wasn't going to give it a hard block, but I really, after looking at it again, I really, really think that a hard block will pop those cables so much better. So I'm going to do that and then I'll show it to you again next week. Because I plan on having a party, a blocking party with that when I block this shawl, the Coggin machine, which should be sometime this week. I sewed buttons on Gabriel's sweater. So I got, I went to Joanne's, I have a new thing, but since it was part of the sweater, I didn't uh, feel the need to talk about it separately. So here are the buttons and he wore the sweater to school last week. He loves the sweater. Um, he, he only wore it the one day because I then confiscated it so that I could make sure it stayed in pretty good shape to show you the buttons because I, kids are just difficult with their clothes. Not difficult. Kids are hard on their clothes and I didn't want the buttons to get lost or something. I mean, I sewed them on pretty securely. They're they shouldn't go anywhere, but yeah, he he's really, really, really rough on his things. But now I'll give it back to him, and the sweater is officially, officially finished. And he looks so cute in it. Yesterday, I took, I went to knitting, and I took all of my mending things that um, that I needed to work on. So I took the hat, woven the ends. I took my sock that I needed to darn and I darned the hole. So there you see it. I didn't have any more of this yarn, but I actually don't mind when the, um, when the, I don't mind this. I don't mind that you can see where I mended it because I mended it and, um, I don't know. I kind of like it. it adds character doesn't bother me that it's a different color completely. And I had a needle that had this gray yarn in it, and it actually has gray yarn in it still from when I sewed on the buttons. 
to Gabriel's sweater, so I was like, well, I already have yarn threaded, so I don't have to worry about it, so I'll just use that. And I put on the sock right after I finished darning it. I can't feel where I mended it. It's not bothersome on my foot, so I count that as a win, and that means that this pair of socks will no longer be sitting on my desk where it has been sitting for, I don't know, how long is how long has it been? A month? Well, I've been waiting to darn that hole, and it didn't even take that long. It took, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Ridiculous. I should have just done it earlier. I will, um, I will link to a darning video in the show notes. I know that Allison asked about it, and um, I think... I know someone put a link in the show or in the the thread where Allison asked about it. So thank you so much. I can't remember who put the link, but you are awesome because I didn't, and I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I'll put a link in the show notes this week for that. And also, I've been really really bad about show notes the past month or two, but they're all caught up, and I will do them this week also. I don't, th ugh, life has been crazy and I'm trying to get back on track. I'm really, really trying. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying that I am trying to be better about it. So thank you for being patient about that. Okay. The, um, the big thing that I worked on this week, but is not quite mended, which is part of the reason why this is going to be a month long thing instead of just this week for mending is I shortened the sleeves on the sweater. This is the um, modified Care Bears with Fangs that went through the washing machine and dryer. And I cut off the sleeves. What I did was I do do do. So here, here's a sleeve. I snipped one stitch. I unraveled all the way around. And it, um, the, the yarn, when I unraveled it, was attached to this part, which is good. Um, as you can see, those stitches, they're not going anywhere. They're just kind of hanging out. Because it's slightly felted. The yarn is slightly felted, but not felted enough that it stuck to itself and wouldn't pull out. That was fine. And actually, you can see, because... Yeah, I'll tell you my plan. So here's the sweater sleeve before I get back to the sweater. Um, I'm going to make these into leg warmers. They're the perfect height to go from my, um, my ankle bone to right below my kneecap, which is a really good height for um, under my work pants when I'm wearing short socks because I don't always wear my long socks to work, um, especially if... I need to wash my socks, you know? Anyway, leg warmers. Um, I'm going to rip back, and you can see here, slightly felted, but not so much that it doesn't come out, just that it gets little um, fiber stickies occasionally. And then once you get the fiber sticky out, it pulls out pretty easily. So it's still, it's still usable which is important because I was going to, um, if it, if it was not, if I was not able to pull out the yarn, I would have just cut across and then folded this in and, um, sewn a seam, which would have been fine. But instead I was able to just bind off the edge. So I used the, um, the knit two together through back loop bind off, which is, decently stretchy. Uh, this desperately needs a sweater stone taken to it, so don't, um, don't, uh, don't look too closely at the pilling. But the sleeves are fixed, and so I'm going to, I'm going to rip out, um, several rounds of this. I don't know, probably, probably about five, and then I'm going to do, no, more than five. Uh, probably seven, and then I'm going to do a few garter ridges and then bind off. So taking out seven, yeah, that should work. Um, because this bottom part is garter, so I just want them to, to match, and I also don't want it to roll. 
hopefully that will be happening this week for both of those. For the sweater, I also um, fixed, there was a hole right here, and it's not the best fixed job, but I fixed it. I don't think you can really, well, I guess you can kind of see it if you're looking for it. But I don't think that if you weren't looking for it, you would be able to see it right away. Um, so I fixed that hole. It it just looked like the yarn had, um, like one strand had been snipped and just unraveled. So it probably just got damaged in the washing machine or it got caught on something. It didn't, I don't know. It definitely wasn't a wear hole. It was definitely like it got caught on something. The other thing that I want to do is because the um, it felted and it shrunk a little, the zipper doesn't fit nicely. It ripples. So I'm going to take out the zipper and reattach it. Actually, I think I'm going to take out this zipper and buy a shorter zipper to put in because this is quite a long zipper. And um, it actually fit perfectly when I made the sweater into the part where the... Um, where the increases had stopped for the front, but now it's it's going to be too long. And I don't really want to cut the zipper if I don't have to. I'd rather just buy a shorter zipper and put it in and then save this longer zipper for a future sweater project because I'm sure it will be making one at some point. Yeah. I don't know if that will happen this week or if it will just be something that I get to during the month, but that is on my list of things to do for March Mend It, or Mend It March rather. Other plans, um, my string band hat, the one with the wooden buttons, several of the wooden buttons have broken since I made it. I think there are eight buttons total on the hat, I can't remember, eight or nine, and three of them have broken partially due to me setting down my hat and um, it getting knocked around a bit and partially due to the fact that they're wooden buttons and the weather has been super dry this winter. Like one of them just cracked out of nowhere and then um, I set it down and I think I set my book on top of it and the button cracked even more so it just needs to be replaced. So I'll be replacing buttons on those. Um, there is a pair of socks of Steve's that I made. They're the Forest Lawn Socks, I believe, by Jenna Meyer. They were test knit. And I noticed last time I washed them that there was a stitch in each of the cuffs that started unraveling down. So I obviously didn't bind it off. Um, that one stitch on both socks, same thing. So I'm going to fix that so it doesn't unravel the entire way down the sock because they're both still in the cuff different places but I will fix that and I will be looking through my other knitted things and um, see if anything else needs to be mended. I would appreciate input if, um, if you have the time in the thread for this show. So I made these socks for Cecilia uh, I don't know, two years ago, a long time ago, because it was before we moved to this place. And they have, um, they've been through a lot. Her dog chewed holes in both of the legs. So I had to do a mending project on both legs, um, where I, right here on this one, now that I'm looking, I can see where the yarn was joined right here. Um, I can tell because they were knit from the cuff down, but then when I did the mending, I picked up and then knit up to the cuff. So the, um, there's just, the, the stitches are just made different. Not, they're not made differently because you know, they're just knit stitches, but, um, top down versus toe up, the stitches look different just a little. So I can tell that this is how much needed to be mended on this sock. Um, and then on this sock, it also had a, 
didn't see. It also had a um, an issue with the the leg that I had to fix because the dog chewed it. And um, this one, possibly, this might be where the yarn was joined. I don't know why there's a hole there, but there's a run down through the sock. So I could fix it. I think these socks still fit Mara. I think she could wear them a little longer, but they have heels and heels are still kind of tricky for Mara. She's, she's kind of getting the concept of putting on heels, but tube socks work much better for her. So I am thinking about just ripping out. Oh, and also these socks are different. So one has stockinette and then, um, reverse, yeah, reverse stockinette on the bottom. And the other has stockinette around the top and then just stockinette on the bottom because I had to remake one of the socks at one point also. Um, I remade this one. This was the second one and I was like, I'm not doing reverse stockinette. So yeah, that happened. Um, I, I'm, I think maybe these socks should just be finished and um, I might just frog them and make a barn raising square out of the yarn. That is my thought. And then whatever isn't used, I can make hexapuffs or use it for heels and cuffs for Mara's Christmas socks. I don't know. What do you think? Should I, should I fix this sock or should I just say these socks have had a good run? They've been on two girl's feet. Um, I'm torn kind of because I have, there, there are other girls in the family who I could hand them down to. But, I don't know, I kind of feel like they've had a good run. Let me know what you think. I'm going to put them in my, I'm using my, um, my Knitpocalypse 2014 bag for my mending right now. So, I'm going to put them in there. Let me know what you think. Should I, should I let the socks become a blanket square now? Have they done their duty or, or what? What do you think? One last thing before I let you go. Um, I watched a podcast this week. It's called Nick Snits. Both of those are spelled with K's in front. I'm sure you've heard of them if you're watching my podcast because uh, his first podcast had a thousand views or something on it. So you've probably seen it. But if you haven't, he is a high school kid. He goes to a boarding school as a day student. Um, he's involved in several artistic um, groups in his school. So he talks about them a little bit and he, he knits. So if you're, especially if you're looking for a guy podcast, um, it's a good one. Also, if you have young knitters in your life or young people who you would like to be knitters, I mean, that might be a good introduction into um, crafting for those, for those kids. He only has four episodes right now, so really easy to catch up, and they're all 40 to 50 minutes, I think. Maybe 55 minutes. So on the longish side, but not over an hour. Um, yeah, and it, they're pretty enjoyable. So I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string, and I will see you next week, and hopefully this week I will have answered all the things in all the threads. See you next week. Bye.